iOS 17.1 is a big update that includes more than 25 brand new features and changes. So we're going to talk about those new features in this video, and we'll also talk about the performance, the battery life, and if you should update or not. The size of this update can range anywhere from around one gigabyte all the way up to six and a half gigabytes, depending on the version you're coming from. And the modem firmware has also been updated for all devices, so you might notice an improvement to cell connectivity. All right, so now what's new here in iOS? OS 17.1 and the first thing is that the flashlight is now a live activity so if you have an iPhone 14 Pro series or any of the iPhone 15s including the regular 15 and 15 plus you now have a flashlight indicator in the dynamic island it's now a live activity to tell you that your flashlight is turned on and this is going to save you if you're one of those people we've all been there where you have your flashlight turned on and then you just throw it in your pocket and you walk around for 30 minutes until somebody points at your pocket and says your flashlight's on. Now also if you go into your settings and go to general and then into airdrop, we have a major change here, a brand new toggle. As you can see 17.1 on the right, we now have a new out of range option here to use cellular data. And what this does is it allows you to continue transferring content even when you step out of airdrop range. So for example, if you're with a friend at a restaurant and they're trying to transfer a big video file to you, if they have to leave before you do and you're not in the same area anymore, you're still going to be able to receive that video file over cellular data. Now they do also need to be on 17.1 for this to work. You both need to have this feature turned on in order for this to work because it still takes both devices, you know, using cell data to transfer that file but you will still be able to do that now even if you're not in the same area anymore and that is awesome. This update also includes some major changes to the Apple Music application. So if you have an Apple Music subscription, you will notice a big change in the form of favorites. So for example, if I search for a song or just find a song on the browse tab, if I haptic press on that song, you will see that we now have a favorite option down here. And just for comparison on previous versions of iOS 17, we had love. So this new favorite feature kind of just replaces the love feature, which really didn't do much in in the past. So now if you favorite a song, you will see we get a little favorited pop up right there. And you will also see this red star next to it. And when you favorite a song and you go into your library, you will see it is automatically added to your library. And if we go into the songs tab, for example, you will see that up in the top right hand corner, whereas before we had a sort option where you can just sort songs by title recently added or artist. Now that has been replaced with a filter option. So now if you tap on the filter button up there in the top right hand corner, we now have the ability to filter our songs by all songs or favorited. And then right below that we have the title recently added and artist. So now if I select on favorited, you can see it only shows the songs that I've favorited. And this applies to every section as well. So if I go into albums, for example, and I go up to filter and I filter my albums by favorited, it's only going to show the albums that I favorited. And again, it applies to artists. It applies to playlists as well. So if you go into playlists, you can only show favorited playlists. And of course, the way that you favorite playlists is the same way you can favorite like a song or something like that. You just haptic press on it. And then you see down here that we have a favorite option. And now all of a sudden that is a favorited playlist and you will be, you know, that's signified by this little star to the left of the album artwork. Speaking of playlists, if we go ahead and add a song to a playlist, you can see that this UI has been changed. So cancel is now up in the top left and you will see that now new playlist is kind of separated from everything else. There's a little bit more space. All of these playlists are now more condensed and it's also sectioned off by recents and then all playlists right down there. So let's just say we wanna add this song to tunes and we're gonna go ahead and try to do that again. So we're gonna add that same playlist to the playlist that we just put it in and you will notice that now in 17.1, we have something underneath of that playlist that says already added, whereas before that was not the case. If you went ahead and tried to re-add it, you would get this right here where it says the song is already in your playlist, but now you kinda of get that warning before you even get a chance to try to add it to that playlist again. Now you'll notice that the artwork for this playlist looks a little bit different, and that's because we can now change the playlist artwork. So we can go to these three dots right here. If we tap on the three dots on a playlist and go to edit, you can see that we can now add our own album artwork, and we also have some kind of AI-generated artwork here that has the name of the playlist 
on the artwork itself. So it's really cool. You can go in here and you can take a photo, choose a photo, or choose a photo from the files application. So if I go to choose photo, for example, and let's just choose this wallpaper that I'm using right here, tap on choose, and now all of a sudden tap on done. And now that is the album artwork for that playlist. But it gets even better because if we go down to the very bottom of the playlist right here, you will see that we have a new section called song suggestions. So from here, we get to preview and add music to playlists. And you can also refresh this if you don't like any of these suggestions that you're offered right there. So if we go and press on refresh, it's going to give us a few new ones. So it gives you five suggestions at a time. And you, all you have to do is press on this little plus right there, and it instantly adds it and replaces it with another their new suggestion. And you'll also notice that we have this little add music option down here underneath of the last added song, whereas before that was not there, it just showed all the songs. You can also now suggest an artist less. So if you don't like hearing music from an artist, like if you're on the autoplay feature and you don't want a certain artist coming up, you can go ahead and haptic press on them right here. And you can see we now have a suggest less option. And then we do also have the favorite option right here in the now playing view. So if you're playing a song, if you're on like autoplay or something like that, and you find a song that you like, you can just simply tap on favor right there and it will favor it with that cool little animation. Now you do also get this on the lock screen. So if I start playing the song, for example, and I go to my lock screen, you will notice that right here on the lock screen, we also have the ability to favor it and unfavor it straight from the lock screen. And also if you find an artist that you like, just go ahead and favor that artist because I've actually noticed that the algorithm is much better now when you can favor an artist. If you go up to the artist and tap right there, it will favor that artist. And I've noticed that when you're on the autoplay feature, like if you go right here and you have autoplay turned on, if you've you know run out of songs in an album or a playlist, it's going to really you know learn from your suggestions and your favorite artists a lot more than before when you loved an artist. It didn't really do much back then, but now it's gotten better. If we head into our settings and go to standby, you will notice some changes here as well. So now it has a new section for display. So before on iOS 17 and 17.0.3, we just had a kill switch for always on right here under display and we had night mode underneath of that well now in 17.1 you can see we have a standalone section for display and when you go in here is when you have the option for night mode and motion to wake whereas before motion to wake was underneath of night mode it was its own little section right there but more importantly right here up top we now have turn display off either automatically after 20 seconds or never. Now what this does is when your phone is in standby mode, so when you're charging your phone and you know it's on your nightstand or whatever the case may be, if you want the display to turn off automatically, you keep that on automatically. And what that does is it just automatically turns off your display when the iPhone is not in use and when the room is dark. So your phone is gonna kind of basically just try to determine when you are asleep and that's when it's going to turn that display off. But you do also have the option to turn Turn the display off manually after 20 seconds no matter what the circumstance and if you do that you will notice that the option for motion to wake is gone so you no longer have motion to wake if you turn that to turn off after 20 seconds and then we do also have never which also gets rid of that and also grays out night mode ios 17.1 also has a slight change to the reachability ui so if i go ahead and invoke reachability on both phones you can see that over here on the left on previous versions of ios 17 we have two dynamic islands so we have one at the top and one down here in that reachability view whereas now in 17.1 we now have a black screen and no longer uses the dominant color and that kind of helps blend in and kind of hide that top normal dynamic island up there so this is kind of just to avoid confusion of having two dynamic islands like before i don't think i've ever seen so much outrage over missing ringtones in my life but with ios 17.0.3 the missing ringtones were a big deal when you go into the sounds and haptic section and go into ringtones or especially under text tones if you went down to the bottom you would no longer have your purchased ringtones or your custom made ringtones but those are now back with 17.1. There's also been a change to the extend wallpaper feature on the lock screen. So this is a really cool functionality with iOS 17, where if you have a picture or an image that's too small to fit on the lock screen, you can use AI to basically extend that photo and you can see kind of this cool gradient that goes up to the top. Well, before in iOS 17, you just got this little 
option down here you just got this little pop-up that said wallpaper extended but now with ios 17.1 that is changing because if i make this smaller you can see it does say wallpaper extended here but we have a change because now if we tap on these three dots we have an option for extend wallpaper whereas before you tap on those three dots you can see that was not there you only were able to achieve that by pinching out and kind of making the image smaller so now you if you you know basically want to revert this back to original you can just deselect extend wallpaper and it takes that image back to the default state so it's grayed out if it's in its default state but if you go to a smaller image and it's already started to extend that wallpaper up there you can now revert back very easily and this also applies to contact posters as well but that little change is nothing compared to the next one because this next feature is one that I requested last year with iOS 16 and this is related to photo shuffle so if you go to add a new wallpaper and go to photo shuffle you can see that we now have the ability to choose photos from a specific album this is something I've been wanting ever since this feature was introduced with iOS 16 so now if you're like me and you have an album just for wallpapers I can choose my wallpapers album so now that I have my album set to wallpapers now it's going to shuffle the wallpapers album specifically every single day so I'm gonna have a new wallpaper every day so before if you wanted to achieve this you'd have to manually select you have to go through and manually select every wallpaper you had it was a pain but now in 17.1 one you can choose photo shuffle from a specific album we also have a change to the behavior of the action button on the iPhone 15 pros so if you had any type of accidental triggers over the past few weeks you're gonna be happy with this update because this is going to pretty much eliminate those accidental triggers because now with 17.1 your phone is going to use the proximity sensors to determine if your phone is in your pocket and if so if it's in your pocket certain functions will be completely disabled so that you cannot accidentally trigger those actions via the action button so going into silent mode and activating a focus mode are going to be the only two actions that are enabled if your phone is you know detecting that it's in your pocket now you will still have to hold down slightly longer on the action button to invoke these two but they still will work if your phone is upside down and like in your pocket or in a bag but the other functions like camera flashlight voice memos magnifier accessibility all of those will be completely disabled they will no longer activate when in your pocket now there's a minor change in the messages application when it comes to adding photos so if you go to add a photo the quick way so if you tap and hold on the plus icon right here you will notice that now you have some very faint haptic feedback if you have an iPhone 15 series and you go into the battery section you will notice that we now have an option for USB-C accessories so it now shows USB-C accessories as taking up some of your your battery life so if you're wondering why your battery life is going down a lot if you're using like a USB-C fan or something like that now you can see it in your battery section this update also adds the ability to check the balance of your bank account in the wallet application in the UK so if you're in the UK and your bank supports the open banking API that Apple has implemented with this update you will be able to see the balance of your bank account in the wallet application also in wallet if you're in the US and you have a discover card Card, you can now see card balance and transaction history straight from within the wallet application and in settings this is part of Apple's connected cards feature and before only Amex and maybe a few other cards supported full transaction history but discover features that and also your total credit card balance that's not been available on any card until now in the books application reading now is now read now you'll see that change up top as well where it says read now instead of reading now and also the books application will nudge you to read half finished books this update also includes a fix for the radiation issue that caused the iPhone 12 to be banned in France and if you're curious about the nitty-gritty of this quote-unquote issue Apple did write up a pretty extensive support document that outlines everything and how they went about fixing it this update also adds home key support for matter locks so if you have a matter lock in your household you now have home key support and speaking of the home if you have home pods the tvos 17.1 update adds the enhanced dialogue feature to the original home pod and the home pod mini so this was limited
limited to the HomePod second generation before this update. And if you're into gaming, this update also adds support for the Nintendo Switch N64 controller, which could be pretty cool depending on what game you're playing. There's also a minor UI change when it comes to the volume slider over here on the left-hand side. So if you go ahead and turn your volume all the way up and you go past the 100%, you see that little jiggle right there? It goes up a lot further than it did on previous versions. So on 17.1, for example, you could see it went up a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell, but here on 17.1, it goes up further and also this bar gets a little bit skinnier than it did beforehand. iOS 17.1 also includes several bug fixes, one of which is major because if you were on social media for the past couple of weeks, you've likely seen all of the complaints and all of the articles, all the press of people talking about screen burn-in on the iPhone 15 series specifically. Now, I'm here to tell you that this did not impact only the iPhone 15 series. I've had people here in my comments and on Twitter, everywhere else, telling me that this impacted their iPhone 12 mini, this impacted their iPhone 13 Pro Max. You know, every iPhone on iOS 17 seems to have been faced with this issue, which was not screen burn-in, by the way, it was image persistence. So this update fixes an issue that may cause display image persistence. And I've had multiple people, at least a dozen people who've reached out to me showing me a before and after picture of their phone and this has been fully resolved now. So a lot of people thought this was a hardware defect with their iPhones, but it is not. This has now been fixed over software. And then another bug that a lot of people have been talking about lately, really ever since iOS 17 dropped, was keyboard lag. So now the keyboard lag appears to have been fixed. And if it's not fixed, it's definitely a lot better than it was beforehand. So I've noticed a lot of you guys in Discord on the Apple Dan Discord server, link down in the description below, a lot of you over there had issues with the keyboard lag. And now from reading all of your comments and all of your updates, it seems like the keyboard lag has been fixed for the most part. If it's not fully fixed, like I said, it's like 90% better. This update also improves the reliability of screen time settings syncing across devices. So the Wall Street Journal actually published a report a few weeks back after parents complained that screen time settings would reset or fail to sync across all devices within a family sharing group. And this update, 17.1, finally fixes that. This update also fixes the issue that may cause the significant location privacy setting to reset when transferring an Apple Watch or pairing it for the first time. So if you go into your settings and then go to privacy and security and then to location services and down all the way to the bottom to system services and go down here to significant locations, if you had this turned off before, Numerous people messaged me over the past couple of weeks telling me that this was turned on all of a sudden, even though they had that off. And that is a battery, you know, drain culprit right there. So double check and make sure your significant locations is turned off because that could have been turned on previously. But now that bug has been patched. And if you're on the iPhone 15 series, we have a fix for the 80% charging limit bug. So if you go down to your battery health and charging section and then into charging optimization, if you had this set to 80% limit for some reason it would charge past 80% on at 17.0.3. So if you had that issue, that has now been addressed and it will stop at 80%. And also for the 15 series, if you had issues with searching in messages, there was an issue where if you transferred data from an old iPhone to a new iPhone and you search for messages, it would show you old messages instead of recent ones. But now it's fixed and it shows recent messages and not old ones. 17.1 also resolves an issue where the names of incoming callers may not appear when you're on another call. So if you have a phone call, you're already on a phone call and you get another one that comes in, sometimes it would not show the contact name. And this happened to me and it would show the photo. That's the only reason I knew who it was calling, but it would not show the name, but now that's been fixed. And then of course we do have crash detection optimizations for the iPhone 14 and the 15 series, because of course we cannot be having all of those false triggers that this feature brought. So hopefully we have less of those after 17.1. And then just a couple of quick notes here. There is no journal application in 17.1. We will likely be seeing that journal 
internal app in 17.2, maybe even later. And then also the 80% charging limit feature along with the battery cycle count are still exclusive to the iPhone 15 lineup. So neither one of those features have come to any other iPhone. And then alongside the iOS 17.1 update, we did get watchOS 10.1, which includes major features like the name drop feature along with the double tap feature, which, you know, if you have an Apple Watch Series 9 or an Ultra 2, that's pretty much the reason you bought it. So that's now been activated with watchOS 10.1. And I did make a separate video on that. And you can find that in the description down below. Now, as far as the performance and the battery life goes, I've noticed that performance is slightly better here in 17.1. And I did also run a Geekbench test and you can see I scored a 2932 on the single core and a 7316 on the multi core. So if I compare that to previous versions, let's just say 17.0.1, for example, we scored a 2643 and a 6708. So much higher scores here on 17.1. Of course, that may not be the best. We have 17.0.2 here and you can see kind of the scores comparing it and much higher here on 17.1 compared to previous versions. Now, when it comes to battery life, I will say that battery life to me feels about the same as it did previously on previous versions of iOS 17. I don't really think it's much better. You might see an improvement if you were facing battery drain issues specifically, like if you had major glitches and just major battery drain, 17.1 could fix that, but don't expect to get much better battery life on 17.1 compared to previous versions. If you're going to see an improvement, it's going to be a minor one. So now let's answer the question, should you up to iOS 17.1 or not. And I would say that this is a no brainer update for anybody who had the image persistence bug or the screen burn in bug, whatever you want to call it. If you had that on your display, you need to update to 17.1 as soon as possible because this is one of the bigger software bug fixes that you'll ever see from Apple. So if you had that issue, update instantly. But even if you never had that issue or you never had any of the other issues that I talked about in this video, iOS 17.1 adds several new features. There's a lot of improvements and just the security updates. All those three things combine to make this a very worthy update for all iOS 17 users despite your device or your circumstances. I've been using the final version here for a week now, and I've not faced any major issues or any type of battery drain, anything like that. So I would say that it's pretty safe to update on day one to iOS 17.1. And then finally, looking a little bit further ahead, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple, because next up, we will be seeing iOS 17.2 beta. So if you're on the beta program, we should see the 17.2 betas kick off very soon. And the final release for 17.2 is is most likely not going to be here until the end of November, potentially early December. But of course, we could also see a 17.1.1 at some point in November if Apple finds some bug fixes that they deem necessary to push out an update for. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 17.1. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 17 coverage. And if you want to get this wallpaper along with private Discord access and many other perks, check out brandonbutch.com. That is a great way to support me as an independent creator as well. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you very soon.